What's going on, guys? Welcome back to WWE Network and Show. I Graham G. S. Matthews break down all the original content you watch on the WWE Network and on Peacock. And today we're talking the October 9th, 2021 edition of Talking Smack. Now, usually these reviews go up on Sundays, but I've been severely backed up this weekend, so that's why my SmackDown review went up so early on Saturday morning, like 3 a.m., because uh, I recorded it on Friday, put it up before I went to sleep on Saturday or Friday night, whatever. Um, but yeah, I've just been super, super, super busy this past week, and I apologize for the delay. This is actually one of two new Network & Show videos going up today. Between this and my Dark Side of the Ring review on the um, episode on Johnny K-9 that aired last late last week, which was great. So uh, anyway, as far as Talking Smack is concerned, for October 9th, 2021, once again hosted by Jackie Redman, the newest addition to the show, and Matt Camp. Um, to start off the show, they recapped the contract signing that started off SmackDown on Friday between Bianca Belair, Sasha Banks, and Becky Lynch, uh, promoting the Triple Threat SmackDown Women's Championship match at Crown Jewel in two weeks, or next Thursday at this point, I guess. Um, they talk about how Bianca Belair is not the rookie that Bianca and Becky have kind of made her out to be. They also recap the Rey Mysterio versus Sami Zayn match that saw Sami Zayn pick up the victory in advance to the next round in the King of the Ring tournament, while the dissension kind of, uh, you know, kind of simmers, so to speak, between the Mysterios still. And Jackie asks, what has to give with the Mysterios? They continue to have a lack of success. Dominic has since lost to Sami three times. Rey lost to Sami on Friday. And they kind of talk about how Dominic, it was his fault, and that was why Ray lost the match on Friday. After Dominic said, oh, I'm not going to go out to the ring with you, and then he did, and then he cost him the win. Something's got to give at some point between those two. But when it does, it's probably going to be on Raw, because they got drafted to Raw um, last week. Matt Camp says that you can't touch the trophy before you win. It's a common sports tradition, and that's exactly what Sammy did after he won. He went over to the crown and put it on. I don't think Finn did. I think he looked at it. But they cut away before Finn could put on the crown, which makes me think that he's probably winning. But yeah, he's right. I feel like any time we've seen someone go up to the crown, hold the scepter, hold the crown, sit in the throne, whatever, that person always loses. I feel like Corbin may have done that and he ended up winning anyway. I don't remember. Um, but yeah, usually that's a telltale sign that person is not winning because they're not going to give away the sight of them holding the crown and the scepter and sitting in the throne before they eventually win it. So obviously Sammy wasn't going to win anyway. Finn Balor is going to beat him next week on the show without a doubt. We hear from Sami Zayn who says that if and when he becomes king of the ring, he will be a benevolent, uh, benevolent king rather. And uh, he may very well make Dominic his prince and set him free from the, you know, reign of terror from his father, Ray. And that was pretty much all that we heard from Sammy. Entertaining as usual, short, sweet, straight to the point. Uh, Jackie said that after that little short interview that he did with, uh, uh, the, I forgot her name, oh my god, the uh, Megan, Megan Moran or whatever her name is, uh, the backstage interviewer for SmackDown, uh, Jackie said that she sold on King Sammy and hopes that he wins the whole thing. Um, Matt Camp talks about how, you know, Tony Storm lost to Zelina Vega in the first round of the Queen's Tournament, uh, Queen's Crown Tournament also on Friday that kicked off. And Camp said that, uh, you know, Storm was the fan favorite to win. She was expected to beat Vega as she did in her debut match three months ago. And she did not, which was fucking terrible. I do not agree with that booking decision. Nor do I agree with Carmella beating um, Carmella beating Liv Morgan a little later on in the show. But, uh, yeah, as Camp says that Vega, he feels that uh, Vega is going to take full advantage of being the queen and, win and winning the queen's crown if she goes on to win the whole thing. So we hear from Vega backstage at SmackDown, and she says winning the Queen's Crown to her would solidify her place in WWE history. And she wants to make everyone kiss the ring. And she alluded to that on SmackDown as well. And after Megan brings up, oh, what about Carmella? You guys are friends. What are your thoughts on her and facing her in the next round? And Vega says, well, I will beat whoever I have to. She kind of downplays it and says, I'm going to have to beat whoever I have to, whoever I go up against in order to become the queen of WWE. And she calls Carmella a frenemy, and uh, that was interesting, so we'll see how that match plays out next week. I really couldn't care less. The wrong people won in both circumstances, but that's just my opinion. Um, they also talk about Balor and Cesaro, Camp and Jackie, that is. They talk about Balor and Cesaro going back and forth and having a great match on SmackDown, which I completely agree with. And uh, Matt Camp questions if the prince can become the king. Because he still calls himself the Prince a little bit. They have it on the Titantron, I'm pretty sure, carrying over the gimmick from NXT that he previously did in Japan. He didn't do it on the main roster the first time. Didn't do it in NXT when he first came in, but he kind of went back to it in NXT recently. Um, but he's questioning if the Prince can become 
the king, and we'll see, and I think he will. So we hear from Balor, also backstage. We hear from all the winners in the respective tournament, you know, uh, first round matches on the show, the quarterfinal matches. Balor praises Cesaro for being a hard fought, you know, great challenger, a great competitor for him to go up against and then beat on SmackDown. He also puts Sami Zayn on notice. Come next week on SmackDown, he's beating him too to become the king of WWE. And he also mentions that he's at the peak of his career right now, which is debatable, I would say, so as far as his in-ring work. Um, the demon shit was pretty bad at extreme roles in the way that he lost and whatever, but he is doing some great work in his career right now, so it's kind of hard to argue with that, but I could definitely see that being a point of uh, contention or debate with some fans. Um, but anyway, back to uh, Jackie and Camp in the studio. They recap Carmella beating Liv Morgan to advance in the Queen's Crown Tournament, and Matt Camp wonders what the mask that Carmella wears is even made of. Because she, once again, used it to her advantage to beat Liv Morgan on SmackDown. It looks fucking, like, stupid material to me. Like, it's, like, uh, felt or something like that, or whatever you would call it. It seems like she made it in arts and crafts and just put it on her face, but that that's just my opinion. Uh, they're kind of selling it, oh, it's so dangerous. I mean, it doesn't look like it's a plastic metal mask. Maybe I'm wrong, but we hear from Carmella, who vows to make history again, as she was the first ever woman to win the Money in the Bank ladder match for the women. Uh, back in 2017, the first ever two-time Miss Money in the Bank, which I guess is legitimate, I'm not sure. Um, I thought she simply retained the briefcase, but I guess she calls herself a two-time Miss Money in the Bank, whatever. Uh, she also won the WrestleMania Women's Battle Royal. She also won the SmackDown Women's Championship. One accolade that she's forgotten to mention, and I'm not surprised because it's been years, but she and R-Truth didn't win the first, but they did win the second, and so far the last, Mixed Match Challenge back in 2018 alongside R-Truth. Uh, that was another thing that she won. But she's not worried about Zelina Vega in the next round, and she calls her mask her secret weapon before talking about how beautiful she is before walking off. Uh, Matt Camp mentions that Seth Rollins should not have been surprised that Edge came after him on SmackDown with everything that he did to his family and after invading his home the week before, and he blames Rollins for being the one to make it personal. And Camp says that Hell in the Cell changes careers, and he questions if Edge will leave on another stretcher come Crown Jewel or if he'll emerge victorious against uh, Rollins a lot like he did at SummerSlam. And Jackie even mentions that Edge does not look afraid of Rollins. And if anything, Rollins should be the one afraid of Edge, come hell in the cell. And that's it. That was it for uh, Talking Smack for October 9, 2021. Pretty standard stuff. I hit. I, we got we got to hear from more people here on this episode than we usually do, for, like in the backstage interview format. But I hate how the interviews are always so short. Like the Sammy one was good, and Zelina and Carmella were fine, and the um, who was the other one? Uh, Finn Balor, he was good too. But they're always so short. It's not the extended kind of interview that we got previously with Kayla and Heyman also being on the show. That was like peak talking smack, obviously, before they uh, rebooted. The original format of the show was amazing, too. But, you know, the new format, the interviews are always so short. You never really get a lot out of it. They're literally like 60 seconds or less. There's really not a lot that they can say. It's a lot like the interviews that WWE.com puts up or on their YouTube channel following the shows. It's really no different than that. But this was a fine edition of Talking Smack, recapping the highs and lows of the 2021 King of the Ring Tournament and the Queen's Crown Tournament kicking off on Friday's SmackDown. Uh, thanks for checking out my review. I appreciate it. Be sure to like the video, drop a comment, share the video, and subscribe to the channel for more daily content. You're not only getting one new video today, that being this one, but two, including my Dark Side of the Ring review on the Johnny K-9 episode, the uh, Bedlams and Bombs episode, or whatever they were calling it, Bikers, Bedlams, and Bombs I don't know if it was necessarily in that order in the title, but that's going up a little later on today, so keep an eye out for that as well. Have a great rest of your week, guys. I'm Graham G.S. Matthews, and I'll catch your ass down the road.